Hey everybody, welcome to day two of our online learning experience. Um, I hope day one was okay. I know there were some issues yesterday regarding um, internet connection and issues with the quiz. So thank you to those who reached out to me and provided me with those uh, updates. Um, I've been contacting Uzella and they're very quick to respond. So if you notice any problems with the website, with the quiz, with the activities, whatever, just let me know and I will reach out to them and try to resolve the issue. So let's go ahead and get started with our second uh, article. Um, it's a lot shorter than yesterday, so this shouldn't take too long. Again, I want to remind you of what we are doing. So as we are reading the article, we are doing a few things. We are highlighting important facts and main ideas. We are identifying important vocabulary. Um, and we want to just choose like three to five words and then try to figure out what the definitions are using context clues. And if we are not able to do that, then we can open up a second page and or a second tab and look those up online. The third thing we are doing is writing questions or comments. So again, we want to have three to five questions or comments. When we are done with that, we're going to work on the activities. So again, um, I don't believe there is a power words activity for this, but I'm going to double check on this other one that I have. Yeah, so this article does not have any power word activity, so you can skip that. This article does have a quiz. So again, make sure you guys are careful taking your quizzes, take your time because these are these are going to be counted towards your grade. And finally, there will be a writing assignment, um, which again, we will do together. Okay, so we will be doing some of this together. But again, every day, I'm going to take a little bit of the support away so that you can start to do this on your own. And please feel free to get together with your friends and work on this together, okay? If you're allowed to. I know sometimes um, you're not able to leave your house or your parents don't let you go to someone else's house, but if you are able to, then great. Try to do this with a friend or with a group of friends. So let's go ahead and get started. This is called Who Joins TikTok to Share Information About Coronavirus? And I've been pronouncing it TikTok this whole time because I don't know. I just thought that was funny. You guys are all familiar with TikTok, right? It's this, I think, right? I don't know. And I, I, whatever. But you guys know the whole dance. I know you guys are like trying to do your dance and TikTok and imitate others and whatever and having your own little dance competition. Cool. That, that's fun. Uh, but TikTok can also be used for more important things like what is happening out there and um, the who, this is not the band, the who, which none of you know, you don't know the who, your parents might, your grandparents might, um, but you don't, this is not the same who, this is not a band, this is the World Health Organization, WHO. And they are joining TikTok to share information about the coronavirus because well, who needs to be informed about the coronavirus? You guys, right? Young people. Um, and TikTok users tend to be people your age or a little older, teenagers, young adults. And uh, all those people, even though you guys are not as vulnerable to the coronavirus, you still need to be informed because this is a very new thing. And um, the, the World Health Organization wants all of you guys to be informed. All right, so let's get started with the reading. Again, you're gonna follow along with me. Misinformation about the coronavirus is flooding social media. The World Health Organization, WHO, joined the TikTok social network on February 28th in an effort to stop some of it. The organization is called WHO for short. All right, so the most important sentence in that paragraph is the first one. So we're gonna go ahead and highlight it. Make sure you, you are careful when you highlight. You obviously don't wanna highlight everything. 
And we also want to highlight names, right? So we're going to highlight World Health Organization. And this time I think I'm going to choose some other colors. I think I'm going to use yellow for main ideas and I'm going to use green for other things like names and dates and, and other facts. So I just want to keep it a little bit more separated. I'm also going to highlight TikTok because that's a name of a social network. And finally, I'm going to highlight this date, February 28th. Okay. Since the outbreak began, people have shared false information through coronavirus related memes on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Some of the online posts claim that vitamin C can stop the illness. Another says garlic will help. Okay. So let's go ahead and just highlight those last two sentences because those are claims that people are making which are false. And it's important that you guys know that because I'm sure you've been on TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, maybe not Facebook, that's more like my generation, but definitely um, you guys probably go on Instagram, definitely TikTok, maybe even, maybe even Snapchat. And you guys are reading about the coronavirus and a lot of the information is false. So we got to clear the record on that because misinformation can be dangerous. So I'm going to highlight those last two sentences. So now you know vitamin C and garlic are not going to stop the illness, right? Garlic is for vampires, okay? If you have a vampire in your house, then garlic will kill the vampire. I'm just kidding. There are no vampires. Um, okay, so... I'm gonna also highlight Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And that is gonna be green because those are names, not main ideas. So we're gonna separate our main ideas from names, dates, and the like. Both of those claims have been shown to be false. The United States has started human testing of a drug to treat the virus. However, so far there isn't a cure. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says, this is the CDC. Its symptoms can include a fever, cough, and shortness of breath. Okay, so let's go ahead and we wanna just choose the most important fact from that last paragraph. And I feel like the first sentence is probably the most important because it tells us that the, um, the, the vaccine um, is starting to be tested, right? So the U.S. has started human testing of a drug to treat the virus, okay? And that is important. That's a main idea, okay? So I'm going to highlight that. But I also want to highlight Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, which is the CDC. I'm going to move my camera over. And that'll be in green. And I also feel like that last sentence is important because it tells us what those symptoms are, okay? So let's go ahead and highlight that in yellow. Sometimes paragraphs can have multiple main ideas. And interestingly enough, this one, it's the first sentence and the last sentence, right? Your say and your so. Um, not every paragraph is gonna be in a say, show, so format. But in this particular paragraph, that first sentence, the topic sentence is important. And then that last sentence is important too because it has specific details about the symptoms. So we're gonna highlight that. Okay, and before I move on, I'm gonna go ahead and just stop. And we before we go on to like the next section, which is reliable public health advice, I wanna now select one important vocab word and maybe write a question or comment, okay? So I want you guys to go ahead and look for your own vocabulary word. I'm gonna pause the video. I'm gonna look for a word. You're gonna look for a word and let's see if we can highlight. Let's see if we can both figure out the same word, right? We may choose other words. That's okay. Let's just stick with one, okay, one word. I'm gonna pause my camera. I'll be right back. All right, everybody, I'm back. I went ahead and selected the word that I felt was the most important and I selected the word virus. I went ahead and highlighted it in a different color and originally it was highlighted in yellow with the sentence, but what I did is I deleted the highlighting and then I re-highlighted it, but just up to the word the, and then I highlighted the word virus in purple. Now, 
you probably already know what a virus is, right? And sometimes you're going to know what these words mean already, but we want to also focus on important words, not just words that you already know or don't know, but words that are important to the um, to the section, okay? And I went ahead and selected virus um, because it's an important word of the section, right? We're talking about the coronavirus. We're talking about vi viruses in general. We can also be talking about so I'm going to go ahead and select virus. I highlighted, highlighted it, and now I'm going to go ahead and write it down, okay, in my annotation. And we know that a virus is an illness, right, or it's a disease that can cause an illness. But I want to be very clear about what a virus is because there's a lot of misinformation about what these things are, and it's important that you know the truth, that you know actual facts. So I'm going to go ahead and do a search on what a virus is because I wanna make sure that I know, I know personally what the truth is um, and not just an assumption. So it is an infectious agent. A virus is a biological agent that reproduces inside the cells of living hosts. You are a host, your body is a host to chemicals or to viruses or to anything that it comes in contact with, right? So a virus, if I'm gonna put this in my own words, right? Um, a virus is an agent, it's a biological agent, meaning it's going to go into your body and it's going to reproduce inside the cells of your body. Okay, so I don't want to copy the definition, I'm going to put it in my own words. So I'm going to go ahead and write a biological agent that reproduces itself in living hosts okay so now we know a virus um, it reproduces itself right it's it grows it reproduces in in living um bodies and living hosts animals you um anything else that's alive it can um uh, a virus can reproduce itself replicate itself and then basically try to attack right so i'm gonna go ahead and Save that. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and now we're gonna move on to our question or comment. So I got my one word and now I'm gonna write a question or comment. So I now want you to think of your own question or comment. And I'm gonna pause the video again to give you time to think. All right, so I have my question and it is for this first sentence here. So I'm just gonna click on it. And because I'm gonna be making a question for this first sentence, I'm gonna go ahead and change the color now to red. So red will be for questions and comments, okay? So we wanna use our colors purposefully. So each color needs to represent a different strategy that you're using to close read, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and write Q for question. And my question is, very simple, why is misinformation, I'm gonna say it first, then I'm gonna write it. Why is, misinforma it, why is misinformation about the coronavirus being spread on social media? Okay, like why? How come um, so many false claims and fake news as it's called, why is it being spread? In social media what's the purpose of that why so I'm gonna go ahead and write that oops and I misspelled misinformation of course there we go Okay, so there's my question. Why is misinformation being spread on social media? And now I'm ready to move on. So again, this is what close reading looks like, okay? I'm gonna just do a real quick, I'm gonna play with this. All right. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Let's see if I can undo that. Okay, sorry, I'm still learning. How to play with this uh, yeah whatever okay 
So anyway, what you see here, I'm circling with my cursor. This is what your reading should look like online, okay? This is what I wanna see when it's time for me to start checking your work. I wanna see different color highlights. I wanna see questions, comments. I wanna see vocabulary. I wanna see main ideas and facts highlighted. And this is what close reading is. Close reading is not just sitting there and reading and that's it. Close reading is you are interacting with the text, okay? You are interacting with the information. You are sharing your ideas. You are asking questions. You are analyzing. This is reading analysis, okay? Comprehension is your ability to understand. Analysis is your ability to ask questions, to break down the reading and make sense of it even further, okay? So think of comprehension as the what and analysis as the why and the how, okay? So this is what I wanna see in your reading. Let's go ahead and continue. Reliable public health advice. In its first post on the platform, who the public safety organization wrote, we are joining a tick at TikTok to provide you with reliable and timely public health advice. Our first post, how to protect yourself from hashtag coronavirus. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that quote because it tells us directly what the World Health Organization is putting out there on TikTok. And that's important for us to know, right? Because they're actually writing and informing young people and the public, anyone who uses TikTok, about the actual truth about the coronavirus. <sighs> Benedita, Benetta, I don't know how to pronounce her name, Allegranzi is the organization's lead of infection prevention and control. In a video, she explained how people can slow down the spread of the coronavirus. She also directs viewers to the organization's website for more resources and information. The WHO site gives people ways to protect against the coronavirus. So I'm gonna stop there, I'm gonna highlight her name because again, we wanna highlight names of people, places. Those are called proper nouns. And I'm gonna highlight that in green this time. And I'm gonna highlight what she actually does, right? So she explains in, her, in the video, how to slow down the spread. And that's an important main idea. Okay, and that's pretty much like the most important parts of this paragraph. Okay, and then we have, this is, this is her. This is um, Benedita Allegranzi. I hope I'm saying her name right. I apologize if I'm not. Okay, and she's using again TikTok to spread correct information. Okay, she's an expert. We want to listen to the scientists, the researchers, the experts. Um, they are credible sources of information. Okay, so now we're going to continue. In the video, Allegranzi tells viewers to wash their hands. She also says people should cough and sneeze into their elbows. So, <coughs> or, okay, so it's called the vampire cough or the vampire sneeze right into your elbow. Okay. Um, like, like if you're biting a vampire or if you're a vampire and you're biting into, into your host, right? Um, she also says people should cough and sneeze into their elbows and avoid, avoid close contact with sick people. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that entire paragraph. It's super short, but I'm going to just highlight where it starts with her name. So go ahead and follow along with me and do that. Okay. And before I move on. Now, the next thing is, before we move on to the next, I know it's a very short section, but I want us to locate a vocabulary word, and this time, let's go ahead and write a comment, okay? I'm going to pause my video. I want you to go ahead and do both things. Write your own question or com write a comment, write your own comment, and then also uh, identify and define one important word from that section, okay? I'm going to do the same. You're gonna do the same, but let's pause. I'm gonna pause, go ahead and work. All right guys, I am back. I went ahead and highlighted the word platform. If you highlighted a different word, great. 
By the way, when I pause my video, you also need to pause the video because it's going to take you straight into the next segment. And so, yeah, you guys need to pause when I pause, okay? Because again, you're doing this on your own, right? With my support, but I also need you to think for yourself and not do everything that I do. Um, so when I tell you to pause, please do that. Of course, this is not live. I am not watching you to make sure that you're doing everything exactly as I tell you to, but I am trusting that you are helping yourself by helping me by following the video, okay? So I went ahead and selected platform, and I'm gonna go ahead and write the word platform off to the side. Okay, so I'm gonna try to figure out using context clues. So it says, in its first post on the platform, who the public safety organization wrote, we are joining at TikTok. Okay, so I'm gonna assume that based on that information, a platform is a place, a social media place where people can post information. Okay, it is a, a social media locale. All right, so that is my inference of a platform just kind of based on the way it is used in the paragraph. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. Go ahead and write your own definition for a different word if you found something else, or you can go ahead and use my definition. So I'm going to go ahead and type that out. Okay, so platform, a social media um, locale or dashboard for people to post information. Okay, so social media locale or dashboard for people to post information. So that's my um, definition of platform. Okay, and again, you wanna write your own definitions based on your con based on the context clues, and if you're still not able to figure out what a word means, then you can look it up, okay? But I want you guys to use context clues. And now let's go ahead and write our comment. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it again. Go ahead and pause the video. Write your own comment. All right, guys, so I am back. I went ahead and highlighted the title of the um, section. And here is my comment. I wrote, I think it is smart of the who to use various social media platforms to raise awareness of the coronavirus and to inform the public of the facts. So that is my comment. That is what I think. You might have something different. You might, you can use the same thing that I wrote. That's fine. Um, but again, this is, uh, we want to highlight now the, the title of the sections, okay? Because we are commenting and questioning the entire section. I know in the first section, there really wasn't a subtitle because we have, it's the introduction, right? So in the introduction, it's okay to select a piece of information to highlight and then write your question or comment. But for sections where it has the subtopic um, or the subtitle, then you want to just highlight that because you're really questioning and commenting the entire section, right? Okay, so now let's go ahead and move on to, it looks like this is the last section, definitely a lot shorter of an article than yesterday. Combating infodemic. Who previously announced social media efforts to combat what it calls an infodemic or an overabundance of information? So much information can be can complicate things. It makes it hard for people to find trustworthy sources and reliable guidance when they need it, the organization said. Okay, I'm going to go ahead. Sorry, I'm going to go ahead and highlight. Let's see. Probably the quote, right? So when you have quotes, things that people say, um, we want to definitely highlight that because it's important. And that is the main idea, right? Is that you have this overabundance of information. That's the other thing that was quoted. So I'm going to highlight that as well in yellow. And I'm also going to highlight the word infodemic. 
I feel like infodemic is probably would probably make a good vocab word. So I'm going to highlight that in purple and I'm going to go ahead and write the definition. And luckily this already gives us um, the definition of infodemic. And infodemic isn't a real word, by the way, it's a made up word. So they're kind of comparing, um, they're combining information and pandemic into one word because a pandemic is worldwide and information is, so to combine both is like saying information is being spread worldwide, kind of like a virus, right? Information is being compared to a virus where it's being spread out um, like a pandemic. So it's called an infodemic. And we'll go ahead and just make that our our vocab word, or if you find another word later on that you also wanna highlight, that's fine to remember. You wanna get three to five words. I'm gonna do the minimum because I don't want this video to be more than an hour or so, but you can definitely find more vocab words, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and write infodemic. And what's the definition of that? Information that is spread across the world like a pandemic. Okay, so now we can move on. The organization uploaded a second video explaining how to properly wear a respiratory mask. The agency does not advise most people to go out and buy them. So let's go ahead and highlight that first sentence. And Respiratory mask, I feel like I want to look up what that is. I mean, I know what it is, but some of you might not know what that is. So let's go ahead and Google that. And so basically, these are respiratory masks up here. And they are masks that you put over your nose and mouth area. Okay, so that's what they look like. And they're saying to people, don't buy them, right? Don't buy them. So let's find out why. Not everyone needs a mask. If you don't have respiratory symptoms, such as fever, cough, or runny nose, you don't need to wear a medical mask, who says in the video. Okay, so let's go ahead and highlight that quote. It's important to know because a lot of people are out there buying masks that they don't need to buy. And when you buy things that you don't need, you are taking away from people who do need them. So be mindful of that with respiratory masks and toilet paper and food, right? We want to make sure that we protect our families, but we also don't want to overbuy um, and take away from those who are more needy. Okay, so just a word of advice there. It's been widely reported that medical masks are in short supply as the coronavirus spreads across the globe. Let's go ahead and hi highlight that sentence. The coronavirus has killed at least 3,000 people across the world, mostly in China. There have been 11 reported deaths in the United States as of March 5th. Now this article was written a few days ago. So if you look at the updates of how many people have died in the US, it has gone up. So as of March 5th, which was several days ago, it was only 11, but the number is higher now. Okay, and you can totally look that up yourself later on, but let's, let's finish this. And more than 100 confirmed cases. However, experts predict a big increase is on the way, right? That's what I was just saying. We know that a lot more people have been infected and have died. So let's go ahead and highlight um, 3,000 people. Actually, let's back up. We're going to highlight coronavirus has killed at least 3,000 people. And we'll highlight that in yellow. That's the main idea. But I'm also going to highlight China in green because, again, we want to highlight names and places and things like that. I'm going to highlight 11 reported deaths in the United States as of March 5th. That'll be in green. It's not a main idea. It's more of a fact that supports the main idea. And then I'm also gonna highlight 100 confirmed cases. Okay, cool. So now last thing I wanna do is write my question or comment. 
So go ahead. I'm going to pause the video. You're going to pause the video. And let's go ahead and write our own question or comment. Please pause the video. All right, so I went ahead and wrote my comment. I chose to write a comment. You may have chosen to write a question. Again, we want to highlight the um, subtitle. And I went ahead and wrote a comment. And I put, I think people have really panicked and not thought, really thought it through when they overbought food, masks, and supplies, right? I think people just kind of went out and just bought, 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 and not really thought it through. Like, do I really need all this stuff right now? Um, especially things like fruit and vegetables, produce, right? When all these people go to the market and they buy all this produce, it's not going to last for weeks and weeks and weeks, guys. Fruits and vegetables go bad within a few days. So to buy all of these um, fruits and vegetables, you know, number one, that that's showing panic. Number two, um, it's going to go bad. And so now we have food waste. And number three, we're taking from people who really do need those items. Okay. Same thing with the masks. Not everybody needs a mask and a mask and, and supplies, right? Only buy what you absolutely need because we need to make sure that we are sharing, that we are um, making these supplies available for everyone. Okay. So that's my opinion. That's what I think. You may disagree, and that's great. I want you guys to disagree with me. I want you to form your own opinion about what's happening, okay? So now we got that done. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to the activities. Again, please take the quiz yourself, okay? But let's go ahead and do the writing together. I'm going to switch here to this one just because I can't write on my own account. I have to use a student account for this. I'm going to move my camera down there. Okay. So the question is, choose a problem and solutions described in the text. Explain what the problem is and why it matters using examples, facts, and details from the text. If possible, describe any solutions proposed in the text. Okay. You're going to really be on your own with this one. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you an outline of what your paragraph should have, but you are going to be writing your own paragraph for this. Okay. You may want to also open up your transitions document. So if you need to pause the video and open that up, go ahead and do that. Um, you should also have a list of transitions in your interactive notebook. Okay. So, um, you may need to, you know, you can have that open on at your desk while you are working on this. Okay, so let's begin by writing say show so. Capitalized, of course. Okay, so let's look at the question again because it's kind of wordy. All right, so it says choose a problem and solutions described in the text. Explain what that problem is and why it matters. Okay, so it's asking us to choose one problem. If it said problems, then we would give more than one, but we're going to focus on just one problem, okay? So your say is, okay, and I'm, again, don't copy what I'm writing because I'm gonna give you an outline. You have to write this down, okay? So I'm just gonna give you a question. What is one problem according to the text? So your say needs to be one problem according to the text. What's the problem, okay? And then your show is going to be all of the examples and facts and details. Again, you wanna to try to give like two to three, okay? So now for your show, you're gonna provide uh, provide two to three examples of the text to explain the problem. Okay. Remember, you want to give an example and then explain it. Give another example and then explain it. Okay. So your show should really be at least four sentences. Okay. And then your so is going to be 
the solution. Okay, the solution to the problem. So it does say solutions, meaning um, plural, right? So we wanna give um, two solutions, okay? Um, but because again, your so is going to be, is it needs to be one sentence, um, I will allow for the sake of the question, the so to have two sentences for this because you wanna give two solutions, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and write, provide two solutions to the problem. So you can go ahead and provide two sentences for that, okay? Your paragraph, again, should be anywhere between five and 10 sentences. Those of you who are struggling writers, you wanna give at least five, I would say even maybe six sentences at this point. Those of you who are more developed writers, um, try to shoot for that like seven to 10 sentence range, okay? And then you're gonna submit your response when you are done, okay? So go ahead and work on the writing. When you are done, submit it, take your quiz, do well on the quiz, take your time. I know you guys wanna get through the quiz real fast. Remember, I'm, I'm checking these, I'm gonna grade these. This is part of your grade, whether, you know, what, what, whenever we come back, I don't know, but I still have to submit report cards. Um, and again, you're, you're, it's not always just about the grade, guys. I, I need to get evidence that you're learning. I need evidence that you are taking your time and you're reading and you're doing a good job. So, um, and again, work on this with friends, okay? If you're working on it together, you can help each other, okay? Um, so try to do that. Or if you have brothers or sisters, a lot of you have siblings and you, who are in the same grade as you, work together on this, okay? Do this together. Anyway, I'm out for the night. Well, I'm. This is morning, right? I'm. I'm. You're watching this today. Today is Tuesday, but I'm. I make the videos the night before, so it's technically Monday night right now. But I'm. Yeah, I'm tired. All right. Good night. Goodbye. Have a great day. Stay safe. Stay clean. Um, eat your fruits and vegetables and do your chores. All right. Bye, guys. Miss you. Love you.